What does your gut have to do with your brain? Today we'll take a look at the microbiome gut-brain axis and how this incredible system affects mood, sleep, and performance. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I am a physician specializing in integrative psychiatry and sleep medicine. First off, what is the gut microbiome? Each one of us is like a walking ecosystem. We carry trillions of bacteria and fungi and viruses in our bodies and in our gut. The gut microbiome actually weighs four and a half pounds. That's more than the weight of the human brain. Moreover, as humans, we have about 20,000 genes. The gut microbiome contains about 20 million genes. Amazing, right? We have an entire abundant ecosystem like the Amazon rainforest right here in our bellies. Gut bacteria help us to digest and assimilate nutrients from the food that we eat. They can use up those nutrients in ways that our cells cannot, and they also synthesize vitamins. The microbiome also helps to strengthen our bones by absorbing calcium and magnesium. It strengthens our immune system. It's involved in the inflammatory response. It's involved in brain health and even regulating our sleep-wake cycles and our energy levels. The microbiome is simply amazing and is involved in many, many different processes in the body that we don't even quite fully understand. So it'll be really exciting to see the research that comes out on this over the next few years. Do you ever get a gut feeling or a gut instinct or butterflies in your stomach when you're nervous? This is because you have another brain in your abdomen. There is actually another nervous system in the abdomen called the enteric nervous system. This is the nervous system that lines the wall of the gut. The enteric nervous system is known as the second brain. It contains more nerve endings than the spinal cord and produces 95% of the serotonin in the body. There's constant two-way communication between the gut and the brain, largely through a neurological superhighway called the vagus nerve. The gut microbiome sends signals to the brain via the superhighway in the form of neurotransmitters, hormones, and proteins. When there's an imbalance in the types of bacteria in the gut, this is called dysbiosis. Dysbiosis leads to issues like leaky gut and inflammation, which have been linked to anxiety, PTSD, and depression. Studies have shown that living in cities actually reduces the diversity of the bacteria in the gut versus living on farms and in rural areas, which increases biodiversity in the gut microbiome. Low microbial diversity in the gut has been linked with inflammation, leading to what researchers have called an epidemic of inflammatory disease in modern urban society. Certain types of inflammatory markers are associated with anxiety and depression. The microbiome also affects sleep by regulating levels of melatonin and cortisol and the neurotransmitters serotonin and GABA, all of which affect sleep quality. A study this year from the University of Missouri found that obstructive sleep apnea actually alters the composition of the microbiome and that restoring the microbiome could actually help reduce the symptoms and consequences of sleep apnea like fatigue and sleepiness. Now this study was done in mice so there's still a lot of research to be done on humans and looking at the implications of treatment in human populations. As far as performance, a healthy gut microbiome boosts energy levels by producing ATP, which is like fuel for our cells. It regulates metabolism. It also produces short chain fatty acids, which are involved in many different processes, including reducing inflammation, protecting against cancer, and also protecting the brain. How do you promote a healthy microbiome? Remember, we're going for diversity, like the Amazonian rainforest, not a Saharan desert. The amount of plants you eat actually predicts the diversity of your microbiome. You'll want to be eating lots of fresh fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. Think about whole, unprocessed foods and lots and lots of plants. As far as probiotics, there is research going on into different strains that can help with specific conditions like mood disorders and other um, diagnoses. You can also think about including prebiotics in your diet. Prebiotics are non-digestible fibers that are eaten up by the gut microbiome and help to grow the bacterial diversity in the gut. So you can think of prebiotics like fertilizer for your microbiome. Exercise actually increases the diversity of the gut microbiome and is also one of the best antidepressants. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Gardening, putting your hands in the soil, spending time in nature, spending time with animals actually helps to increase the diversity of the gut microbiome. 
So if you want to increase the diversity of your gut microbiome, think of a few simple things. Eat less refined sugar, eat more plants, exercise, and spend more time in nature. Did you enjoy this video? If so, click the like button and sign up for my weekly newsletter to get bite-sized tips on well-being. The link to the newsletter is in the YouTube video description and is also available on my website at intrabalance.com, I-N-T-R-A-Balance.com.